and there's a lot of garbage in here. Hey there guys! So, welcome back from our last video, which was Tales of Zillia 1. So this time we're going to be talking about uh, Tales of Zillia D. This is the second main Mothership title to be a direct sequel to a previous game. But the question is, does this game offer anything new, or is it just more of the same? Does it? I don't know. Well, well. <laughs> Not time like the present. I mean, you gotta find out, right? So, here we go, guys. These are the top ten facts about Tales of Zillia 2. Number 10. Originally, there were no plans for a Western localization. Basically, screw you, America. Tales of Zillia was the 15th anniversary game for the Tales of series, and therefore, producer Hideo Baba decided to further explore the world of this game with a direct sequel. This game, however, did not start production until after development for Zillia. This would be the first Tales game to come out of the brand new Bandai Namco Studios, which the entire Tales of staff moved to and would function as the in-house development environment. A large amount of the lore in Tales of Zillia was only referred to in character speech and text, so that gave the developers quite a bit of wiggle room for them to explore, but it looked like fans in the West would miss out on this one. At San Diego Comic Con 2012, while Zillia 2 was in the last stages of development, Baba stated that there were no current plans for localization outside of Japan. But thankfully, they did change their minds as it was announced in July of 2013 that a Western version was indeed on the way. Therefore, Tales fans outside of Japan got to partake in the adventure in August of 2014. Number 9. It slightly alters the double raid linear motion battle system. The presentation for Tales of Zillia 2 is virtually identical to the first game as far as graphics are concerned. However, a new wrinkle was added as players are prompted to make choices that will affect the root of the story and how it will progress. The battle system also got a little facelift as well, here called the Cross Double Raid Linear Motion Battle System. The fighting in the game has more of a focus on landing combos with linked arts. Battling places more of a focus on exploiting the elemental weaknesses of your opponents, and by hitting them with that weakness you can do increased damage. And introduced here is the Chromatus, hope I'm saying that right, or Corpse Shell Mode, which gives Ludger a nice temporary power-up. The leveling system is changed as well, as it uses the Alluvium Orb function. Using Extractor, you can unlock certain arts and skills with the orbs. There is also a Kitty Dispatch, in which the cats that you can collect can go and retrieve items for you. But hey, we all know that will never really happen in real life. I mean, have you seen cats? All they do is lay around all day. Number 8. Ludger Kresnik is the first silent main Tales protagonist. The main protagonist for Tales of Zillia 2 is named Ludger Kresnik, who is a member of the Kresnik family. He is commonly depicted as reliable, if somewhat rash, at least according to the manga adaptations. In the first playthrough of the game, he really doesn't have much to say. He, in all intents and purposes, is the first silent lead character for the Tales of series. Although, you can unlock his voice actor after you beat the game in later walkthroughs. Interestingly, Ludger also can switch on the fly between his weapons from swords, guns, and the big off hammers. This is pretty similar to the style shift function from Tales of Graces. Director of the Western version of Zillia 2, Kohei Rokugawa, explained that this was done to give the player a chance to immerse themselves into the psyche of Ludger. This can allow them to understand his feelings more. Which is all fine and good, but they hurt my feelings with one of its endings. Yeah, this game has multiple endings, and one of them sees Ludger turn evil and murder literally the entire cast of Tales of Zillia 1. Jesus Christ, what the friggin' helly hell? I know this is supposed to be a what the f ending, and yeah, they're right on that. What the f But was this really necessary? Somebody animated this. This was drawn. Ugh, I'm still in therapy because of this bullsh. Number seven, Diego Okamura joined on to help with the character designs. The first Tales of Zillia game saw the collaboration of series veterans Matsumi Inomata and Kozuki Fujishima, as they both designed its characters. With the sequel, they would return as well. 
But in a bit of a surprising move, another well-known character designer would join on in the process as well, and that would be Diego Okamura. This would be the third main title that he would lend his talents to, as previously he worked on Symphonia and Vesperia. Along with them, he has also worked on a host of escort titles, from Tales of the World, Tales of the Tempest, and Dawn of the New World. While his portfolio usually consists of Tales games, he has also worked on other major projects such as the Super Smash Bros. series. In an interview, Okamura explained that for this game, the character designs were a bit more realistic as compared to other Tales games. This is why Ludger looks more like a regular employee. He was a bit miffed that he couldn't make them a little flashier. And despite working on Tales games for a decade, this would be the first time he would actually be allowed to draw main characters for a Tales game. Number 6. Multiple writers handle the script. As mentioned earlier, this game was the brainchild of Tales producer Hideo Baba. During the development of Zillia's story, Hideo began to imagine what things would be like in this world in the aftermath of the events of the first game. For script duties, Hideo Baba brought in Naoki Yamamoto to write the main scenario. In addition to writing the side events for Zillia 1, Naoki also won the Super Formula Championship in 2013 and 2018. Uh, he also won the Super GT title in 2000... God damn, he did all that? Y yeah, he won the Super GT title in 2018 as well. Huh. Hold on, we need to fact check. Okay, so it turns out there is actually another Naoki Yamamoto and uh, he's a famous race car driver, so uh, bit of a mix up on that. Thanks guys! Okay, yeah, as I was saying, this Naoki Yamamoto worked on Tales of Hearts R and would go on to work on Tales of Zestiria and Tales of Berseria in the near future. In addition, writer of Zillia's main story, Daisuke Kiga, returned to handle the character scenarios for this game. Phew, man, that was weird. Number five. The game's DLC has costumes from Code Geass. No surprise here, but for Tales of Zillia 2, the DLC from the first game can be used here, which includes an adorable Pharah costume for Leia. But besides that, Zillia 2 also provides new costumes to dress up your characters in. A pre-owner bonus can give Ludger an Emil costume, although I don't know why you want to do that to him. Also, first-run copies in Japan would give Jude and Mila Yuri and Asbel bonus costumes, respectively. One cute set includes different hairstyles and a sports set theme for the bunch, among others. But one set that really stands out, in my opinion, are costumes based on the excellent anime Code Geass. A series that ran from 2006 to 2007, Code Geass received great acclaim and success from both fans and critics alike and Zillia gives these characters a chance to cosplay as them. It may be a small detail, but you know, it's things like this that brings a little extra fun to these Tales games for us. Number 4. Ludger's debt was designed to ease players into the game. So they say. So early in the game, Ludger gets rescued and cured by some seedy characters. As a result, he gets lassoed with a 20 million gold debt. Jesus f***ing Christ! Wow. Okay, so throughout the game, Ludger is forced to pay back every bit of this money by doing jobs and so on and so forth. Okay, but oh, 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 let's be real, guys. Now, if you have a debt, let's say, let's be reasonable here. If you've got like a $10,000 debt or even a $20,000 debt, you would panic a little bit and do whatever you could to try to work your ass off to pay it off. But once you start hitting the millions territory, I think even you guys would actually start to calm down a little bit because frankly, who's kidding who here? I mean, really? Do you expect anybody to have that kind of money or be able to work their ass off in their lifetime to be able to pay off one million of that, let alone 20? Yeah, all right, moving on. Now, this is, for, interestingly, something that you have to do in order to progress through the game. So as you keep paying off your debt, you will get access to new areas. Yay. Many critics ended up pointing out that this was a pretty painfully obvious way to extend the gameplay. You know, on top of the regular grinding just to get your characters up to strengths to fight better opponents. And you know what? The critics are not wrong here. 
According to product manager Dennis Lee and producer Ted Sung, this function was added in order to ease the players into the game. Yeah, I call bull <laughs> You can indeed unlock more areas and accept new jobs and do fetch quests and side quests in order to gain more cash flow, but you know you can do that by just fighting monsters the old fashioned way. Yeah, you know, I'm guessing that this was ultimately just something that they were trying to introduce to new players of the Tales series, but come on guys. All of that, introducing new mechanics to ease players into a series is fine and good, but chances are, if you're playing Tales of Zillia 2, odds are you probably played the first one, or at the very least, maybe another game in the series before it. Again, who are we kidding here? Number three, the land of Canaan is a reference to an ancient land in the Bible. The young female protagonist for this game, El Mel Marta, is on a mission for her father in order to find the land of Canaan. She describes it as a magical place that grants wishes for those who are able to reach it. This area that she is looking for shares the same name as the ancient land that occupies what is now known as modern day Israel. In the Bible, the Hebrews called Canaan the land of milk and honey and was led there by their patriarch Moses. The land was named after Canaan, who was the grandson of Noah. In the book of Joshua, after the Exodus narrative, General Joshua would hold many campaigns subduing the populace with the help of his god. Most famous of them was the destruction of the city of Jericho. In time, the lands was divided among Joshua's people and would become the kingdoms of Israel and Judea. The more you know. Number two. Gaius and Muse go from Tails antagonists to Tails party members. The entire playable cast from the first game, Tales of Zillia, all return to be playable once again in this one. But in addition to Ludger, two more characters are also playable, and that would be Muse and Gaius. Originally, these two characters were meant to be playable characters in the first game. But, as you know, due to time constraints and a whole bunch of other BS that we don't ever get to see behind the scenes, these guys were excluded. Instead, they were both just antagonists for the first outing. But that would change here. Muse is a great spirit with the power of dimensions, while Gaius is, well, the king of Razamaxia. In the lore of the game, his name also translated means he who pulls the world behind him. That is badass. I mean, do you know who else pulls the world behind them? Superman. I'm not kidding. Look. Cool, huh? And uh, so yeah, it turns out Gaius is also a fan of Final Fantasy VII because he wields a apparently huge long sword that reminds you of a certain character, doesn't it? Don't we all? Well, I mean, it's obvious. I mean, he also has a very strong resistance to cold weather. And sorry for going on and on about him, but what can I say? I have a bit of a, a man crush. Don't we all? And number one. It was not as successful as the original Tales of Zillia. On the whole, Tales of Zillia 2 was received generally well, but not as well as the original. As a direct sequel, this game was in a rather difficult position, as if you change too much, you step too far away from what people loved about the first game. But on the other hand, you can't just make an exact copy of the first one. While the story was well developed, and the RPG does have a great deal of content, many criticize the debt system, as it just plainly pads out the gameplay. This was the general feeling for critics in both Japan and the West. Now as far as sales go, Tales of Zillia 2 did decently, but according to Namco Bandai's financial results of 2013, while the overall revenue was up, the game missed its sales projections. Bandai Namco was expecting 650,000 copies sold, but it only reached 500,000. While the game did not manage to live up to the success of the original, it still managed to find an audience and following all its own, from within the fandom. Tales of Zillia 2 tried some new things, and while they may not have won over everyone, it still does offer an experience that's all its own. And that's our list. Make sure you leave a like and comment down below. So yeah, we've done a lot of these Tales Fact videos. Tell us, which one's been your favorite so far? Which facts did you find the most interesting? Also, who do you think is the hottest character in the Tales series? Let us know in the comments below. We will proceed to tell you exactly why you are wrong and why Farah will always be number one, goddammit!
Hey there everyone, did you like this video? If you did, why not give us a thumbs up and maybe leave a comment and watch some more of our stuff. Also, if you really want to keep up with the Brotherhood of Gaming, such as myself, William Morris, or Eugene, you should really follow us on our Twitters, links provided below, so you can see what's coming up in the future. And since, you know, we have to play these games sometimes and record them, why not join us on our Twitch page where you can hang out with all of us as we do so and chit chat about the games that we love so much. Lastly, if you want to help keep our dreams alive, you can support us in any number of ways, either by continuing to view our videos, like them, share them with all your friends and family and your peeps and your girlfriends, or you can also join our small Patreon and throw all your spare cash away. We'll even give you a shout out. Once again, thank you all and have a wonderful day.